the story of Mouse Guard deals with mice having to um, struggle to live outside of their own cities and homes. Uh, the places that they build are safe and pretty much impenetrable by predators, but that makes them prisoners of that place. They, they can't move freely. They can't do commerce with other, with other cities and towns. They can't go visit if they have friends or relations. Uh, and so the Mouse Guard is there to make sure that they can travel between those places. And that's kind of the setup for the story, but it's on one like a routine call where um, a grain merchant never makes it to his final destination that uh, three of the, the Mouse Guard, Saxon, Kenzie, and Liam, find not only that the, uh, the grain merchant uh, didn't survive his trip, but that there's a plot against the Mouse Guard to overthrow it. Saxon is a red-cloaked mouse who represents um, offense. He's a sword fighter. He's uh, first to think with his sword, not with his head. Uh, he thinks that everything can be solved with his sword. Uh, he doesn't have a problem jumping into something head first. Uh, he's, he's aggression. Um, he has the best of intentions. He's not, he's not a jerk. Um, he really is trying to help, but that's, that's the way he helps. Um, to balance him out is Kenzie, who's a blue cloaked uh, gray fur mouse. And he's, uh, he's a little more calm, a little more reserved. Um, he's the wise one of the group. He's the one who's supposed to kind of be Saxon's conscience. Um, they actually are both what they represent to a fault. Saxon is so hasty and so aggressive that he, uh, you know, to a fault, where he could hurt himself. Uh, Kenzie is so thoughtful and, and making sure that everything is the right plan that he could actually be too slow in making a decision that could cost him. So that those two really balance each other out. And then the third is, uh, the third of that group is Liam, who's a young mouse. Uh, he's got orange fur that kind of stands out bright and he's got a green cloak to represent that he's new. And uh, he's got enthusiasm, but a reservation about this whole thing. Uh, going out and having these grand adventures, are, they're new to him. Uh, he, when they first encounter um, some of the predators, he's, he's freaked out. He's not ready for this. And then there are other characters as well. There's, uh, there's Rand, who's um, he's kind of the defense guy for Lockhaven, which is home of the Mouse Guard. He's in charge of its defenses, uh, and also tracking on a little map um, where, where the mice are, where, uh, where patrols are, that they should be based on traveling times. And like, you know, knowing that they left two sundowns ago means that they should be about here by now. He marks that on a map, so he can try to track where everybody is. Uh, Gwendolyn is the head of the Mouse Guard. She's their matriarch. Uh, and the Mouse Guard is always run by a female. I did include a female mouse named Sadie, who um, goes on a little excursion. It's in the second issue, the second chapter of the book. To She's going out there kind of on a routine mission as well to find out what's happened to one of the, the guard mice who's stationed at an outpost along the shore. And she's just there to find out what's going on with him. He hasn't been responding to, to some mail and stuff like that. And she ends up finding that he's aware of the plot going on. And then when they try to flee to Lockhaven to warn Gwendolyn, who's head of the Mouse Guard, about the plot, they're stopped by an army of crabs and have to fight their way off the beach. Um, she's tenacious, but still I'm trying to make sure she's still soft. And uh, she's pretty cool. A lot of people um, really like, there's a part where she's in a, a, leaf, a boat made of a leaf and paddling down a little stream. And that's one of the parts that everybody brings up. Oh, I love the part where Sadie's in that leaf boat. And uh, so I figure I'll give her some of those grand kind of things where she gets to go paddling and she gets to, do, go, to, the, she gets to go to the beach outpost and stuff like that. I'll, I'll come up with cooler things for her to do in the future like that. The legend of the Black Axe uh, surrounds a blacksmith whose whole family was slayed by predators. And in his sorrow, he went into his shop and forged this great black axe, um, hopeful and pouring all of his sorrow and all of his heartache into it, that it could be what would save future mouse generations, that it was going to be the weapon 
that could destroy their predators. Um, but it was too heavy for him because it bear all the weight of his sorrow, of his grief. Um, so the axe was taken to the mouse guard home of Lockhaven, and there was one mouse who could wield it. And uh, not only did he wield the axe, he took it on as his own name, the Black Axe. And, uh, and then he kind of went into obscurity, that nobody really knows who he is. Um, some people think he's dead. Um, and so when somebody in the, in the story starts claiming that they're the Black Axe, it raises a lot of eyebrows and suspicions as to how valid that could actually be. A mouse would still be surviving being able to be the original Black Axe. The first miniseries of Mouse Guard was six issues long, and it's now collected into a hardcover called Fall 1152. Um, and it also combines uh, not just the six issues, but an epilogue that I wrote for the series to kind of tie up some loose ends uh, and some uh, field guide pages, some more information, maps, things like that, that you can use to to make the mouse guard world more real to you. Uh, and the epilogue not only ties up what was uh, told in fall, but it sets up winter of 1152, which is the second series that I'm starting and will start in July. After some of the problems in, that happened in fall, the mouse guard run into a food shortage and a medicine shortage, specifically at Lock Haven, their home. And it's, uh, it's do or die. They have to, even though they, they try not to go out in the winter if they don't have to, uh, it's time to go out and send massive amounts of mouse guard out to try to get supplies, to try to redistribute supplies that are at different cities. And also to get, uh, eventually to get city officials to come to Lock Haven for a summit and meet with Gwendolyn to try to figure out politically what's going on in the territories and how can this all be fixed so that there aren't problems in the future. Um, but that's the setup, because the big problem hen ends up happening where they're just trying to get home. The mission's done. The hard part's getting home. The characters in Winter are going to be, for the most part, the same. There'll be a couple characters here and there. They're going to be introduced as minor characters. Um, there was a contest that we ran in Diamond Previews magazine. Um, called Join the Mouse Guard, and the, the winner of that, uh, Lori, she created a, a mouse uh, who also had a beetle, a pet beetle, and he, uh, the part of the prize was that that mouse gets to be in the, in the Mouse Guard series. So um, he makes his debut, as well as the, the beetle. Um, and then there are a few other just smaller roles. 